Hi, good morning. It is June 14th. Um, it is raining. It was not raining when I left the house, but um, clearly it's raining now. And I wanted to come to you guys because I've been working on individual written pieces for each article of clothing and telling a story um, as to how I came to that particular look. And this sweater I already told you about, this is the I Am sweater where the I Am is stitched in the collar and then you can choose adjectives um, to put on your cuffs um, that only you would see. I mean, I guess someone would see if they were like really up close to you, um, but just words that you identify with and you um, can use to kind of encourage you during the day. So as a writer, um, there's importance in word choice, in language. Um, as a parent, I see the effects of words and the things I've said to my kids and I'm like, oh gosh, I hope that doesn't that bounce off them. Um, but I'm gonna tell you a little bit of the journey of my journey with words um, and what I have allowed to stick to me and what I am trying to shed. Um, and just so that we're more careful what's coming out of our mouth. Um, so yeah, so I think it's important, the reason why I love this sweater so much, um, and there are other cool components about it too, but the reason why I love it is just because we go outside and there's so many, even people who love us, um, who even with good intentions tell us things about ourselves or what they think and it's really hard to kind of remember to shield yourself and hold on to what you believe to be true about yourself. So I'm gonna show you some words that I identified with um, at a very early age and how I took those um, and lived with them. So when I was very young, um, the first thing that I was told was that I was smart. Um, even in first grade, I barely did the work. My teacher used to have me help her grade other students, um, which didn't necessarily help socially. Um, but this was something I was certain of. I was certain that I was observant. I was certain that I looked at things differently. I connected things a little bit quicker. Um, so after that label, um, which was a good one, there's nothing wrong with being smart. Um, I was then later identified and that kind of grew. And then I was part of this elite bunch, um, these smart kids, this isolated separate group. Um, and when you are told that you're special, you believe you're special, which you should, um, but then it's a little twisted, right? Cause then if you think you're too special, you get criticism for that. Um, so I was smart. It was this elite group. I was talented, um, which I took on. There's a responsibility with talent, you know? Like if you're talented, you're supposed to show that, express that, share that. Um, so as I'm picking up these great adjectives, these are not bad things. Um, pressure started to come. Um, here's another word, beautiful. Um, since I was very young, I was told I was beautiful. Um, the comment that stuck to me about being beautiful was when I was in sixth grade and I was told you'd be beautiful if, um, beautiful if I was thinner. I was told by my mom that when she was 16, she woke up at 16 and all of her weight was gone and she was gorgeous. And I was like, man, I'll be beautiful if I lose this weight or if I do whatever. Um, so it was always conditional, the beauty. That's why this word came to pass. Um, when I was in my church, there were, it was very quick, it was very easy in religion is very easy to put people in boxes really quickly. So you'd be like, problem, let's fix it. You know, like, we'll go to God for this. This is your issue. Um, I was 14 when I joined my church. Um, I don't know who the heck I was, I was 14. But the words that they chose to label me, um, the first word was prideful. I heard this for years, almost every day. I was rebuked. You are prideful. 
you are selfish, and you are vain. Um, these were the first identifiers that I took to be part of me that were more of negative. You know, I had the smart, I had the talented, I had the elite, I had the beautiful, even if it was conditioned. And all of a sudden, I had vain, prideful, and naive. Um, and it was so ironic because I did not feel beautiful. Um, so to be told I was vain was so hard for me. And I was like, I don't see it. Um, to be told that you're prideful and it's hard for you to receive criticism and you're not teachable and all of these various catchphrases um, is very hard when you're trying to grow up and be proud of yourself. And there's a fine line between confidence and arrogance and being proud and being prideful. Um, and at 14 and 15 and 16, it's really hard to differentiate. Um, but when people who you respect and you care about put that label on you, you hold on to it. Um, so that is what, those were the words that I got from people I really trusted, that my parents really trusted. Um, and then I was in my 20s and I had the pleasure of being labeled this, a love crackhead. Um, whoa, can I, yeah. Oh, love crackhead. I remember at the time, the woman who said this, I didn't have a lot of respect for her mental wellness and was like, how dare she call me a love crackhead? And um, she was absolutely right. I have it all twisted up in the game. I had just come back from moving for someone who clearly wasn't a good fit. Um, I just didn't make the best choices. And like a crackhead, you get so consumed with the drug, with the feeling that you kind of ignore everything else. And that's what I did essentially. Um, I tapped into a couple of people who made me feel not like these labels and I went with it um, and didn't always think of the back end. Um, due to the uh, my sexual past, um, I'm not going to get too much into that. But one of the other labels that I heard was confirmed, I identified and perpetuated um, was that I was special sexually that I kind of stood apart. Before some of you guys are like, oh please, every guy says, don't come for me, just trust me on this one. Um, I took this label so much so that I felt empowered by it, that I named, there's this other like entity, uh, and it was very hard for me to feel like the love was for me or the good labels were for me when I disassociated and gave this whole label its own identity. Um, so when, and these are just a few that I came up with today that I, that are still triggers for me. Um, but what do you do when you, you're near, you feel like you're selfish, you're prideful, you're talented, you're beautiful if you're this, you're elite, you're smart, you're love crackhead, you're vain, you're sexually special, you're naive. And those are just a handful. Um, I didn't even get into always being the poor girl. Always the poor girl. Um, I don't even really have an ending point on this, I guess. My point is that I'm going to talk about this sweater and that words matter and before you go assessing people and putting labels on them even good ones um people take that to heart and they carry that with them and it becomes part of who they are and we they're manifested in different ways and we perpetuate the good and the bad labels and we just have to stop um like I said, I'm very careful about the words I use with my kids. I'm very careful not to tell Bella she's beautiful all of the time. She is beautiful all of the time. But I need her to know that there are things that she is of value that have nothing to do with her face. Um, I need my son to know that 
even though he drives me crazy and he's aggressive and there's some anger there that I don't want him to identify as another angry black boy. Um, it's dangerous and it's not true. Um, do we have to work on things and kind of I have to look at that and see where is that rooted? Absolutely. But we have to be careful how we label each other. Um, so this particular sweater is a reminder, is a reminder of what the words you choose for yourself um, and how you want to identify. So that's the next piece I'm writing um, for the mighty. And I just wanted to check in with you guys. It's been a while. For me, it feels like a while. I hope you have a great day. Uh, I love you guys. Thank you for the donations. Keep sharing the page. Um, that's really, I need to get the word out. I need to expand my market. Um, but have a great day. Love you guys. Bye.